Honourable Senators, the President and Overseas Presiding Officers. Almighty God, we humbly beseech thee to vouchsafe thy special blessing upon this Parliament, and that thou wouldst be pleased to direct and prosper the work of thy servants, to the advancement of thy glory, and to the true welfare of the people of Australia. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Order. On the 16th of February 1988, the Senate referred to the Court of Disputed Returns certain questions relating to the place in the Senate representing New South Wales to which William Robert Wood was returned in the 1987 elections. On the 12th of May 1988, in answer to those questions, the Court found that the place in the Senate was vacant. I presented to the Senate on the 17th of May 1988 the reasons for judgment of the Court in relation to that finding. Since the Senate last met, the Court has made two further orders in relation to the matter referred to it. On the 7th of June 1988, the Court ordered that the Australian Electoral Officer for New South Wales undertake a further counting and recounting of the ballot papers cast for candidates in the election to that state for the purpose of determining the candidate entitled to be elected to the vacant place, and that the Australian Electoral Officer for that state report that result to the Court. On the 21st of July 1988, having received that report, the Court ordered that Irina Patsy Dunn be declared elected as a Senator for New South Wales in the vacant place in the Senate. I now present to the Senate the orders of the Court of the 7th of June and the 21st of July 1988, together with reasons relating to the first of these orders. Having been declared to be elected, Senator Dunn will now be introduced and will make the oath or affirmation before taking her seat in the Senate as required by the Constitution. Admit her. Senator Dunn, before taking your seat, you are required by the Constitution to make and subscribe an oath or affirmation of allegiance. The Clerk will administer the affirmation before me. Mr Clerk. Senator, Senator, please read the affirmation on the card. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I, Irina Dunn, do solemnly and sincerely affirm and declare that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. Senator, would you please sign the test roll and the senator's roll?
The message. Order. Order, I inform the Senate that I have received a copy of the message from Her Majesty the Queen and the address of His Excellency the Governor-General delivered earlier today in the Great Hall to mark the inaugural sittings of the two houses in this building. I table the documents. In order that there may be a full written record of today's events, I propose with the concurrence of honourable senators to incorporate the documents in Hansard. There being no objection, it is so ordered. On behalf of the Senate, I will thank Her Majesty for the message. The Leader of the Government, Senator Button. Mr President, I seek leave to move a motion of thanks relating to the presentation of gifts to the Commonwealth Parliament and to those people associated with the planning and construction of the new Parliament House. Is leave granted? There being no objection, leave is granted. Senator Button. Mr President, I move that the following re resolutions be agreed to. One, that the Senate expresses its thanks and appreciation to the parliaments, governments and peoples of those countries, states and territories, and to those organisations which have so graciously presented gifts to Australia's new Parliament House, and extends a warm welcome to those presiding officers and representatives who are present today. Two, that the Senate extends its sincere thanks to the following persons and organisations associated with the planning and construction of the new Parliament House. Mitchell Giagola and Thorpe Architects, who designed it, the Parliament House Construction Authority, Concrete Holland Joint Venture, and all contractors and workers who built it, the artists, craftsmen and craftswomen who advised on and assisted in its furnishings and decoration, and the members of the Joint Select Committee on the New and Permanent Parliament House, all past and present members of the Joint Standing Committee on the New Parliament House, officers of the National Capital Development Commission, parliamentary and other staff, their endeavours in providing a magnificent permanent building for the Parliament of the Commonwealth of Australia. Mr President, on the historic first sitting day in this building, I should like to take the opportunity to express the appreciation of the Parliament, the Government and the people of Australia to the Parliament's governments, governments and peoples of those countries, states and territories and those organisations which have generously presented gifts to Australia's new Parliament House. It is pleasing that representatives of many of those donors, including the presiding officers of other parliaments, uh, are able to be with us today. The internal spaces of the building now display the embroideries, tapestries, paintings, maps and other gifts sent here from the four corners of the world and the four corners of Australia. They are already part of this building's own history. Outside there are sculptures, benches and trees presented by our friends to the add to the environment of the new building. It is appropriate, Mr President, that I make special mention of the gifts located within this chamber. The Vice Regal Chair, a gift from the Parliament of the United Kingdom, the Distinguished Visitors Chair from the New Zealand Parliament, your own chair, Mr President, which is a gift from the Canadian Senate, and the Hansard Table, a gift from the Government, Parliament and people of Tasmania. All these gifts will remind us and future generations of parliamentarians of our international ties, our bonds with the Australian states and the responsibilities that we owe to the Australian people to cherish and preserve our system of parliamentary democracy. In expressing thanks to, the, to those who join us for this special day and to those who have presented gifts, I believe they share our pride in this building. Their generosity indicates the respect in which Australia's system of parliamentary democracy is held. Mr President, the care and dedication that has gone into the construction of this building gives us a lasting debt of gratitude to all those men and women who have been involved. To the architects, Romaldo Giagola, 
and Richard Thorpe. We say thanks for your vision in designing a building of which all Australians, present and future, can be justly proud. We thank also the Chairman, members and the Chief Executive of the Parliament House Construction Authority and their staff for their hard work and dedication throughout the construction phase of the building. The Concrete Holland Joint Venture, the construction manager and all the other contractors and workers involved in the project who by their labour have made it the remarkable reality it is, we also express thanks. We also recall the work which has been done by the members of the Joint Select Committee on the new and permanent Parliament House, officers of the National Capital Development Commission and parliamentary and other staff in the building. The new Parliament House embodies the work of over 10,000 men and women with contributions from individuals and manufacturers from every state and territory. It's a national showcase demonstrating the skills and energy of the Australian workforce. Mr President, the integration of Australian art and craft in the new building is a key part of its architectural expression. The artists, craftsmen and craftswomen women have created significant works now displayed throughout the building. The meeting place mosaic, designed by Papania artist Michael Nelson Giacomella and fabricated by Masons William McIntosh, Aldo Rossi and Franco Caluzzi, stands in the centre of a ceremonial pool at the heart of the forecourt and is appropriately the first work of art visitors seen when approaching this building. In the Great Hall, the tapestry by 14 weavers of the Victorian Tapestry Workshop dramatically de depicts an Australian coastal landscape created from paintings by Arthur Boyd. In the first floor public gallery, the embroidery designed by South Australian artist Kay Lawrence and produced by more than 1,000 members of the Embroiders Guild of Australia narrates the history of Australia's involvement with the land. The mark tree, designed by South Australian Tony Bishop and interpreted by Sydney craftsman Michael Retter, can be found in the formal entrance foyer and elsewhere in the building. Mr President, there are many more craftspeople and artists who have contributed to the national character of the new Parliament House. Tasmanian woodworker Kevin Perkins and others who have handcrafted tables and desks for the use in principal suites is an example. Other important works of Australian woodcraft include the King's Table in the reception hall and display cases in the foyer exhibiting constitutional documents. We could, of course, continue enum enumerating at length, for wherever we look, we see uh, work worthy of praise and interest. To all those who have worked to give us this new parliament, I express my sincere thanks, and I hope that many Australians will have the opportunity to share our gratitude and indeed excitement when visiting the Parliament House. The Leader of the Opposition, Senator Cheney. Mr President, um, on behalf of the Opposition, I uh, support uh, the motion which has been moved by the Leader of the Government, the expression of thanks to the very many people who have contributed to this building. I agree with him that, and with you, Mr President, that it's very appropriate that representatives of the uh, parliaments and governments and people who have made contribution to this place are here today to hear the expressions of thanks and the formal motion which will make that a part of our permanent Senate record. I think that uh, there is some contention about this building, Mr President, and not least among the senators and members who will occupy it. And I think it's an indication of the conservative nature of human beings that so many of us uh, are finding it difficult to fit into our new and very splendid environment. But I have no doubt, Mr. President, that uh, I have absolutely no doubt, Mr. President, that uh, those who've contributed the various items that have been referred to by the leader of the government uh, hope that uh, those items will inspire us to do our work in a fitting way for Australia. I'd want to make two comments about the uh, building, if I may, Mr. President. One is that uh, the concern about the separation of ministers from the back bench, which is such a strong feature of the design of this building may lead legislators in this place to be more conscious of their role as legislators. And I note that already some retired public servants have written about the possible uses of the new committee rooms and the change that that might induce. And I think that it may well be that the form of the parliament, will, of the parliament house will have a significant impact on the way this parliament does operate. With respect to all those who have been thanked, uh, I can, I think, in full heart on behalf of the opposition uh, say that we support the uh, sentiments which have been expressed by Senator Button. 
I do think, however, that it is also fitting to note that in the construction of this place, the very enormous cost was considerably expanded by the very uh, frequent and absurd restrictive work practices which afflicted this building site. And the one pair group that are omitted, the group who are omitted from the motion of thanks are the Waste Watch Committee of the Opposition and the Rorts Task Force, who <laughs> incurred considerable unpopularity in drawing attention to some of the quite extraordinarily wasteful things which occurred on this site. And I do want to remind the Senate, I do want to remind the Senate as we Order. pass this motion of thanks, that this very expensive building was rendered far more expensive by some of the extraordinary practices which were carried on at this place, unfortunately in common with uh, other commercial building sites in this country. And uh, Mr President, we found uh, when examining this that uh, people were reluctant to talk about what was happening because they were frightened of reprisals. But I just wish to remind the Senate that uh, as this building was being built, people were being paid a specific allowance just to show up at work, uh, that nicking off that practice of arriving at work and then not actually staying to do a day's work was common, that there were endless health and safety strikes which were extremely wasteful, that there was climbing time of two hours paid to crane drivers who took about 45 seconds to actually climb the cranes in question. And I do think that one could uh, extend that list very considerably. In fact, I know that list could be <coughs> extended very considerably, Mr President. With respect to the clothing allowance which was paid, no matter how little time was spent here, the excessive site allowance and the extraordinary range of strikes which were so damaging to many of the contractors who worked here. But, Mr President, I mention that because I Ooh. think that was Order. a very strong feature Order. of the erection of this building. And I do note that uh, the Foreign Affairs Minister-designate, who will, I'm sure will be leaving this place very frequently, and for that we're all uh, mercifully relieved, seeks to intervene. But, Mr President, in what is, I think, a most splendid building, full of the most splendid objects uh, and artefacts, I just express that one uh, element of regret, that it was made so much more expensive for the people of Australia than otherwise would have been required. In all other respects, I heartily join in the... Uh, sentiments which have been expressed by Senator Button. The Leader of the Australian Democrats, Senator Haynes. Thank, thank you, Mr President. I uh, want to associate the Australian Democrats with a motion of appreciation moved by Senator Button to those countries, states and organisations who presented gifts to the new Parliament House. Senator Button has already referred to many of those gifts. Certainly the antique maps and aluminium sculptures, the trees, and the tapestries, the chairs and Chinese lanterns, the crystal glasses and candelabra, the teak benches, bronze busts, books on young Australians, stone lions and porcelain figures, to say nothing of clocks and wall hangings of every kind, will adorn the new Parliament House and its environs, thanks to the generosity of the rest of the world. Many countries of very different political systems and ideologies as well as Australian states and national organisations, have presented the Parliament with a wonderful array of exotic and beautiful gifts. I think it's particularly appropriate that we share the Chamber today with representatives of many of the countries donating those gifts. The President's Chair, the Hansard Tables, Coats of Arms, a Distinguished Visitor's Chair, painting sundials and drinking fountains, the vice-regal chair in the Senate, and dinner services and furniture for special rooms will become, I think, priceless possessions of those of us who work here and those who will follow us. Essentially, these gifts ensure that we want for nothing as far as decorations, accoutrements and creature comforts are concerned. They combine with the mosaic, the tapestry, the parquetry and so on produced by Australian artisans and artists to make this building truly unique and something Australians can view and visit with pride. In supporting this motion, I want to echo the Governor-General's inauguration address by wishing us all well in this place of business and expressing the hope that the august and impressive surroundings which make up our permanent Parliament House lead us and our successors to draft and debate legislation in a true spirit of goodwill 
and concern for the well-being of the nation in the long term rather than our own short-term political gains. Order. The question is that the resolutions moved by Senator Button be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. Contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The Senator Evans. Mr President, I move the Senate to now adjourn. The question is that the Senate do now adjourn. Those of that opinion say aye. Contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. Order. The Senate stands adjourned until tomorrow at 2 p.m. <laughs>